As I drive to pick up Scott, I'm a little nervous. Why am I nervous? I've been interviewed tons of times, several times by Scott himself. But I've never interviewed anyone, well, outside of job applicants. And Scott isn't applying for a job. This is my first Think Tank show with my first guest, and this is my first interview. And this is not just any Scott I'm on the way to pick up. This is Scott Micklin. Scott, who was our local TV news anchor and news director for years. Scott, who has been the general manager of the KSG radio station at San Juan College for the past 10 years. Scott, who hosts a one-hour talk show with local community leaders every weekday morning on his radio station. Yeah, Scott, he's a bit of an expert on how to interview people. I talk too fast when I'm not making a conscious effort to slow it down. I develop an accent that mimics anyone I'm around for more than an hour. I run my words together. I yell at people in traffic. I get lost in the 10 different channels in my head while I'm trying to focus on the one that you see. And I'm interviewing him? <laughs> okay, get it together, Ken. Our topic today is fake news. This is going to be fun. Want to see how it goes? Come along for the ride in Ken's Think Tank. Scott really knows his way around a studio, so I took some time to show him around mine. I asked him if he'd ever been in a studio that was also a truck. I got my studio at 505 Motorsports. You can go there and get a studio of your very own. You'll also need some camera equipment and sound equipment and... You know what? Second thought, don't go to 505 Motorsports to get a studio. Go there and get a vehicle. They're really great at that. We're ready? We're ready. Let's get some coffee. All right. And my crazy, my driving is a little crazy, so I'll okay. well, do I'll my, admit that. I'll that's, do my absolute best good. not to, not to maim or otherwise harm the okay. national treasure um, named Scott Micklin. <laughs> Thank so. you very much. <laughs> I'm glad there's no camera pointed at the floorboards because right. I think there's no brake it's pedal on the side the of the truck. I just want the imaginary to know brake. That. Yeah. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I do have my little chicken handles I can yeah. hang on. They go really <laughs> south. Right. I figured it would make for a fun show, just sure. um, people panicking about Ten my drives. driving. So, yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I just picked you up from United Way. You yes. are a board member. You used to be the president there, right? I am still the president. Oh, no, you're still the uh, president. For about one more meeting, and then uh, my term will end. <laughs> You've been here forever. You 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 came here in like 1989. Right? I know. Yeah, the last century. You know, that's actually when I <laughs> left. I, well, I, I won't take that personal, Ken, but okay. And you came here from Buffalo? Um, actually, I, was, I went to college in Buffalo. Oh, okay. And I was working in Elmira, New York, which is about... Where is that? Three hours away near the border with Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. It's called the Southern Tier of New York State. Its claim to fame is where Mark Twain met his wife, and he wrote some really? of his... Um, Tom Sawyer stories during the summers in Elmira, New York, oh, not awesome. on the Mississippi River. Hi. Hi. Um, we what are would at you an like? undisclosed coffee location. <laughs> <laughs> I will take a small mocha, please. Hot. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna do a large one. A large with, mocha? Yeah, with no whipped cream. It just gets in the way of what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now Ken's gonna. Just... Now no, Ken's like going to talk, like that, like, interview, drive, and drink know, coffee. Just, yeah. <laughs> do you want whipped cream on the small one? Sure. All right. <laughs> I'm not driving. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a lot. Oh, uh oh. What? You know what? I knew you'd be wearing a tie. Oh, thank so you. So I brought a tie. That I know I feel there. much good. Yeah. yeah thank you for the tie. Get matching. Let's see. That's my Beatles tie. Very nice. See. <laughs> Good. It goes with my outfit. Exactly. <laughs> what makes Scott Micklin take off his tie, tie it around your head, and just go crazy? Right. That has never that, happened. It's never happened. But, you know, <laughs> thanks for asking. Back well, I did take house. a pie to the face for childhood did last you? year, so that was that was not necessarily fun for me, but I'm right. sure it was very much fun for the crowd. Um, we're all wearing a, um, what was it, like a leopard print shower cap. <laughs> There's pictures of it. Is there a picture? Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And we're passing um, PMS, KOB, right? Yes. So you're on the board right. with Presbyterian Medical Services. I do serve on that board, yes. You were a long time with, with KOB. 17 news, years. News anchor and right. news, what, news director? News director, yeah. yeah. 
So, so fake news. So where fake did, news, yeah. It, where do you think that came from? I mean, where, how do you think that kind of got well, its start think, outside like, of like regular traditional media that, which may right. not always be the the dead truth, but but where, right. like real fake news? Where where do you? Well, think? I think as you know, as we see, you know, with social media now, there's so many more sources for news, right? Um, and those came about from cable TV, and then of course you've got blogs, and you've got websites, and you've got now all these new sources for for news that have cropped up in the last decade or, or a little bit more. And so I think, you know, in that competitive uh, drive to get people to, to notice you, to notice your website, to notice your news, to notice right. whatever it is you're doing, um, you know, stories would get more and more um, outlandish or sensational <laughs> or, or, or things like that. And, and right. they kind of delve into that fake news category. Then you have the other stories that maybe aren't fake news, but they are maybe political leaning. And so sure, right. nowadays, if you are a conservative, you tend to get your news from more conservative leaning right. media outlets. If you are more liberal, you would get your news and information from more liberal leaning outlets. And so right. anything published from the other side, you would consider fake news because it's the other point of view. And uh, <laughs> they're crazy over there. They're, they're absolutely crazy. Yeah. yeah. And so, so I think we get some of that, even though the stories are probably accurate right. to a some, certain degree, but they're not painting your candidate, your party, right. your, your, your issue in the positive light that you would like it um, reported in. And so right. I think that's where, so it's a combination of, I think, all those things. And, and yeah. I don't know if you agree or not, but that's I, been my observation. Um, I just do. kind of looking at it. I did kind of notice, um, maybe from the traditional news um, avenue, you you might know, um, you would have better insight on this. It, it seemed like things have changed and the world has sped up. And so deadlines and all that kind of a thing cause right. you to spend less and less and less time as a reporter or a journalist or th something like that, less time on a story because of the deadlines that you have to meet right. and, and everything. So and that's true. It doesn't and, seem like there's enough. It, you kind of glean over the top, the top facts, the the superficial right. facts, uh, facts, and then and then like the real meat of the story, where probably the real truth lies, isn't isn't dug into as much anymore. Do you, do you yes, find that true? I think that's true. And in fact, yeah. um, I teach a class at the college called Survey of Mass Media, basically an intro to mass okay. media course, and show them. A, we watch a documentary every semester on. Um, uh, let's see, it's, it's about Edward R. Murrow, who was one of the very first television journalists, okay. moved over from radio, uh, covered World War II in London uh, and, and radio, and oh, they have wow. a lot of these old network correspondents who are talking about even the changes when this was made probably in the 90s. Um, and one of the famous quotes that I remember from that documentary is, you know, the news comes really fast, and there's not a lot of time to interpret the news. Right. We're too busy just reporting it, and right. whereas in the past, there may have been a bit more analysis and maybe a bit more investigative reporting. Sure. And so you get the news with a bit more context, whereas now it's just kind of, right. especially, and especially I think in television, where the picture really draws and moves the story, right. and you don't always know what happens outside of that video clip. Exactly. What yeah. happened before the guy was dragged off the plane? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> you know, we see the guy being dragged off the plane, and that's horrible. Right. Um, but what we don't see is maybe what happened, what led up to that. So, exactly. Um, yeah. And that's just one example, maybe not a good one. Yes. I don't know yeah. how many times I've seen um, Don Knotts die. <laughs> The poor guy <laughs> dies every year. And oh, I feel terrible. That, you know, and then every, every year people go, oh, I loved him. He was great. I'm like, he's been dead for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Don. Oh, God. Yeah. But yeah, I think all of us, you know, as modern consumers of news have a responsibility to, you know, question if the news is accurate, question where yeah. the source is that we're getting our news. Even um, even from traditional media, yeah. like the trusted, the quote sure. unquote trusted news sources, you right. should question: uh, right. is what they're reporting just taken out of context, right. or you know, what's the what's the real story, the full story, or is it just a portion of the story that fits the narrative of the audience that pushes what they report? Right. Um, That's true. And I think again, if you are of a certain political leaning. Um, you know, step mm -hmm. outside the box to get your news or look at right. a news source that's maybe from the other point of view once in a while. Sure. Um, you know, and watch your blood pressure, but 
but just to see what the other side's talking about and, right. and the same story with a different perspective might give you a little bit more of a 360 degree view of the issue. Right. In the timeline in my head, this is how it went, is I started seeing, which I'm a huge fan, um, the Onion articles oh, right. show up okay. on Facebook. Yes. And they were hilarious. Right. And so I was actually reading those because, you know, just highly entertaining and yes. I didn't realize they've actually been around for a long time. They were in print and sure. everything else. So um, I think Chicago based or something like that. Yeah, but a satire news site. Everybody. It is. Yes. Yeah. So the onion is satire news and I understood that okay, re good. just reading the good. stories okay. that they were satire. The funny thing though was watching the people that didn't understand they were satire. Right. And I really wasn't aware of any other of the kind of fake news mm -hmm. stuff but there were so many people that were they were um, they didn't understand that those were that they're they're not true right they're, they they're satire it, they take it verbatim yeah yeah uh, and some people because thought your credibility maybe, Ken Collins right. that's what that was if Ken posted it must be true <laughs> some people thought maybe there's something to it but they were sort of questioning like right. is this for real right <laughs> and and then all of a sudden from that, it seems like sprung up all of these crazy news stories. But I wanted to bring up that I've seen other satire websites or Facebook pages. Um, some are Navajo right. news from the really? reservation that do satire Navajo stories. Really? And it really drives people crazy because <laughs> they think it's true. And they don't see the little disclaimer right. that's on there that says that, that does say that it's satire. At least they admit it. Um, but they <laughs> but they present some of these stories like they're that they're true and and even other you know third party sites that look like a newspaper or look like something right. legitimate and unless you look and maybe click on the about or or about us or yeah, whatever do some you digging. don't you can't tell that it's not true and maybe these crazy things are based in fact but they're not right and then people share them and it makes my head explode sometimes. <laughs> it does. So what do you think a solution for that is? I mean, there there are some organizations now, including Facebook, right. that are taking measures to try and curb that. And see, that worries me a little bit because then, you know, you could talk about, we could talk about censorship and right. free speech. And so, you know, if, if you start blocking sites because you don't agree with them politically or, or what have you, or you think they might be fake, I mean, unless it's right. demonstrably fake... I think it's it's difficult to really make that call to say, you know, we don't want this on our site or not and in front of our three billion users. Um, I think I think part of what Facebook was doing, which isn't necessarily censorship, where they were they were um, kind of cleaning up their user base. Right. So I think they got rid of like thirty thousand um, what they're calling fake accounts. Right. Now that would be good because yeah. that goes against their rules and right. you're not supposed to have a fake account. And and those accounts were then propagating these fake news right. things. So um, and that's pretty much solely what they were doing. Yeah. So they kind of got rid of the account and if you as a person want to go out to one of those fake news sites and share a story, right. then that's you your right. That. You can do that. Right. So I, I kind of I kind of agree with that measure, but you are right. I mean it does kind of borderline it starts to go into that territory of of uh, you know, freedom of speech and and right. and censorship and all that. Exactly. But you know, on the other hand, it would be nice to know that everything you read on Facebook is legit. And, <laughs> you know, and true. Do you, and do, do you ever think that will ever like happen? That. No, no. But it would be nice. <laughs> well, or could there be to. something maybe like a little banner that says, you know, this story has been flagged as potentially not accurate. Sure. You know, yeah. read with caution, or or at least something that would give oh, the user label. something to say. Oh, well, this might not be true. Right. At least you know. Right. So, so kind of like the skull and crossbows for poison or whatever, maybe. Yeah, the, you know, or, or like, they're on the to, on tobacco, maybe maybe a little fake news a symbol little advisory <laughs> or something like on the old CD labels or something, fake right? News if you, advisory, if you, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. If you use that idea, Facebook. You owe me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scott has copyrighted that's, it right here and now. That's right. It's going out in the public domain. Is copywritten. There you are. <laughs> I want the audience to know that Ken is kidnapping me and we're driving to Mexico. <laughs> because I don't think we've turned north yet. We're actually... We're going to Canada. I was going to go to Mexico and change my mind, so now we're... Okay, now well, we're going you know. Canada. 
it's cooler. And the weather's true. getting it's warm getting warm. I don't so really deal. Place to go. Yeah, I don't deal with the heat, with the heat down gotcha. well. So okay. if it were earlier in the year, we'd probably Mexico. Mexico. I, I will, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Spring break. <laughs> yeah. No, we missed our chance. <laughs> Ken, you got to watch a news I, or something. <laughs> Pick up a paper. Come on. I'm trying to help you out. Buddy. The radio, of course, while I'm in the truck. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I was going to have to get out right now. Oh, I think I may be having a spell, Ken, because my entire life is flashing before my eyes. Here I we know. Are. Now it's Sam on college. We're taking Am a I tour. Am I dying? Am I dying? Is and my entire life flashing before my eyes? <laughs> we're you're by the TV station. We now were, we're here at San Juan College. We're at San Juan College, where you've been an instructor since the year after you moved here. 1990, that's true. Yeah, Lord crazy. have mercy. Been instructor here, and now you run the radio station. Now you've I'm got your own talk show. General and manager of KSJE, and that's right? 10 years this year. Isn't that crazy? Wow. How about that? That's amazing. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm a fan of KSJE. You do a good job over there. Certainly try, and if you haven't listened to us, we encourage you to tune in, and you can do it even digitally. I know that's I know. Ken's world. You can stream us, ksje.com. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Well, thank you, Ken. I'm glad we're in one piece. I know, and <laughs> I miss actually coming by and getting on the radio with right. you and all that. Well, so you need to do that. I'm gonna have to we'll do have to that talk again. marketing or something. Exactly. Or, or yeah. But yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Very cool. Thank you very much, sir. Good great luck with this. You. It's a lot of fun. All right. No makeup, everybody. <laughs> Just letting you know this is it. So, so right. you all know we're we're recording this ahead of time. Right. So it's not we're... live. <laughs> so anyway, you took out all the better betters. <laughs> oh.